Welcome everyone to a new episode of the Theatre Thoughts Podcast. I have a new guest on which I'm very, very excited to chat um, about a lot of different musicals that they've had their hands in creating and coming to the stage in Sydney and beyond. We have a composer, lyricist, playwright and performer born and raised in the greater Western Sydney area. They are the composer and lyricist behind the critically acclaimed new Australian musicals The Lovers and The Dismissal. They've performed both on stage and screen for over a decade, received multiple awards and nominations for their work, and her next musical, Zombie the Musical, is currently in development with Hayes Theatre Co. Please welcome Laura Murphy. Thank you so much for jumping on. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you about all things musical because I've seen, I I saw The Lovers and I absolutely adore adored it um All to right. be completely honest with you I was like this is beautiful um the dismissal was currently on stage at the time of the recording so that's getting rave reviews as well and then I was at the 2024 evening where you um premiered zombie and I was just like this is perfect for a musical <laughs> um sorry so I'd love to talk about those today um and yes. and and kind of jump into that um So uh, I guess the first question I wanted to ask is, uh, for those who don't know you, um, give us like the top things to know about Laura Murphy. Okay. Um, I'm a pain in the butt. That's first. (laughs) Um, No, I I am am a like music theatre dork uh, and have spent sort of, yeah, the last decade mainly performing in shows like Grease and Muriel's Wedding, did a couple of Hayes shows like Cry Baby, You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. Um, and But ever since I was really little, I was always a songwriter and always wanted to tell stories and write and make up plays. Um, and so I actually studied music composition at the Australian Institute of Music oh, for like right. three whole weeks. And then quit because I'm such a bad student and oh, I no. just like hated being told what's correct and what's incorrect when it comes to writing music. Mm. I just thought there was no wrong answers. And so I, I just, I, I kind of quickly got the hell out of there and started writing um, songs for a kid's television show, which then I ended up playing the fairy in. And that's how I sort of, got into performing and writing was on the back burner a little bit basically until 2018 right. where I thought I haven't finished any of these shows that I ha- started writing when I was like 15 for the, the lovers, for example. So hurry up and finish something in your goddamn life. <laughs> um, so that's me. Excellent. I love that so much. Cause I feel like, a lot of people can um, appreciate that and understand that. So that's perfect, in my opinion. <laughs> um, so before we jump into um, talking more about The Lovers and the Dismissal and Zombie as well, um, I'd love to do our one-minute theatre thoughts to kind of unpack your brain um, being a musical, um, you know, musical talk, as you said, um, <laughs> and, and see what comes off the top of your head. Great. I'm ready. All righty. Here we go. So first question, um, what has been your favorite production you've seen recently? Um, I saw Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet at Darlinghurst and I loved that production. I was like, it's one of those ones where you're like completely transported um, and taken to another place and then the lights, the house lights come up and you're like, where am I? What am I? When am I? I have, I, I was not present for such a lot for that entire time. Um, so I thought that was wonderful. Excellent. Um, what role haven't you played yet that you'd still want to? Sorry, um, it just cut out a little bit. Oh, that's okay. Um, I said, what role haven't you played yet that you'd still want to? Oh, um, I actually, The Witch and Into the Woods, I've actually oh. played it like twice, once uh, in a like a community theatre group and once like with an orchestra and it was just a short run. The first time I was way too young to play it, like I didn't get it enough. Um, And then the second time I was really sick and it was a short run, so I don't feel like I did it. And so I really feel like I just want to do The Witch and I want to do it properly and I'm like ready now. I'm old enough and ugly enough to like (laughs) sink my teeth into it. So, yeah, The Witch and Into the Woods. Excellent. Um, Name a show that left you speechless. 
Um, oh, uh, the first time I saw Wicked, ah. I was like speechless. Um, even even having been a fan of the soundtrack for so long, when it finally came to Australia, the actual like production and the performances and just everything, just those voices live coming at you, um, I, I just thought it was just the best thing ever. I could not believe that something so immaculate and so relatable was happening right in front of my eyes. Love that, Love that answer. Um, uh, two more. Uh, what's your pre-show ritual? Ritual. Ritual. <gasps> yeah, well, I, um, I have different ones depending on the show. Like, for example, um, when I did Grease, uh, and I did it for like two years. So H, actually, we did nine shows a week for for a portion of that tour. But two years, eight times a week. Um, there was a, the first move of the show was was with her lunchbox, and she had to do like this sweeping move with her lunchbox. And so I would stand, stand side stage and like do it over and over again before every show, just to make sure that like. I got the jump off right, mm. and then I would feel like okay, if I if I have that, then I've got the rest of the show. Um, but that's sort of one that I can remember. But usually, a sort of when I'm in a show routine that sort of just keeps me not far from the character. Um, I do I kind of do something or or wear something every day that's like a little bit what that character would do or wear. Like, so when I was doing murals, I painted my nails, which I just like never, ever do. But I just felt like Tanya would constantly have her nails painted. So I did that just to feel like her every day or it might be like literally like the underwear I'm wearing or whatever, just something subtle that no one would notice. But mm. it's just so I'm like within arm's length of the character. So even on the worst day, if I'm feeling tired, if my if my voice isn't up to scratch, if... I, whatever for whatever reason I can I'm just not that far from the character so I can just go there yeah love that um and the final question was uh which production would you most want to see come to Australia yeah or I want to see waitress which was meant to come I think yeah was it, was it a COVID yeah I casualty? think it was a COVID like, casualty wasn't it yeah and I really want to see that because I just adore that music. And, yeah, I, I really want to see that. Uh, Hades Town as yes, well, yes. which I know heaps of people want to see here. The music is just so gorgeous. The concept is beautiful. I just really want to see that in the flesh. And um, I haven't, you know, been able to get overseas for, for forever. So I don't think, I don't think I'll be able to see it unless it comes here yeah exactly that's exactly how i feel about that i'd love to see it, it literally every person i ask is it's um hades town hades town i'm like oh come on he's like surely 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 so it's, it's someone's got it in the works exactly sure. well let's jump back i want to talk about uh the first question you said so your favorite production you've seen recently was natasha and pierre and the great comet so i i, mean, I saw that at darlinghurst as well and i uh, wholly resonate with what you said it is it was such a stunning production um, and like the performances in it as well were just out of this world. It was so good. Yeah. Every time you show, I like keep a little notepad and pen of like all the keepers in that production. I'm like, aha, uh -huh, love them, love them. Um, <sighs> and yeah, it was just like wall to wall packed with unbelievable talent and not just like the talent in a triple threat way, you know, they could all sing, dance and act. But in, in in like an authenticity of like who they are and like they were all just so incredibly unique and also um, talent in um, like executing a vision and like being cohesive with a vision. Like everybody in that company on stage, off stage, the, the lighting design, front of house, whatever, everybody knew what story they wanted to tell. Um, yeah, it was gorgeous. Excellent. Yeah, I, I was like, um, I, I remember very vividly it came to um, Carla Gare's song uh, that she did and I was just like sitting there. I don't think in a long time I've sat there with my mouth open during a show just being like, oh, what am I witnessing? Yeah, and it was overpowering. You totally, yeah, gorgeous. 
Um, so the other one you said was Wicked for a show that left you speechless. What is it about Wicked that is like, just, it keeps coming back. Like it's obviously playing um, at, at this time uh, in Sydney and it's selling out like every single show. It's mm. packed out. So w- what is it in your opinion that makes Wicked just so, you know, relatable and, and people adore it? People adore it. I think uh, everybody feels like an alphaba. Like everybody feels like an outsider and like they're underestimated and that they, you know, have a, um, you know, they've got a, a, a objective of what they want to do with the world and, um, and when they feel uh, like ostracized or whatever, like I think that's something that speaks to a lot of us. Um, and then like the friendship, just like, it was, I just cannot remember a, t- a show before that, that spoke to that sort of friendship and like feminine friendship. Mm, yeah. And I'd say that was like, what was just so refreshing and magical as, you know, a, a teenager listening to that soundtrack and then eventually seeing the show. Um, but even still all of that and the themes and everything, if I were to talk about the construction of the show, like as a well written piece and well constructed piece and well constructed production, like it really is this machine and it's so slick. Um, it's just so well done. Like it's what a great idea Mm. to make that into a musical, but like ideas are the easy bit. Like it's so hard to execute a good idea and do justice to that good idea. Yeah. And they nailed it. Like in the economy of the storytelling, because I saw it again recently Mm. um, at the lyric and, and yeah, obviously now watching it again, um, in a sort of far more, yeah, looking at the construction of it a little more than I did last time. Last time I just sort of got swept in the emotion and the storytelling. But now that I sort of know it so well, I was just like, damn, they really nailed this. Like the, 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 there's no like wasted moments. There's yeah. not a, a second that is superfluous or that doesn't have a point that is like integral to sort of the, the meaning of the show and like the, the, the sort of payoff at the end, like every bit of it is like essential to lead you to, you know, how you feel when Glinda's up in the bubble at the end and mm. Fiero and Alphaba are walking to their, you know, their, their future. Um, it's just so well constructed. Yeah. Oh, it's gorgeous. I mean, I couldn't have said it better myself, so that's perfect. Well, um, I, you uh, obviously have a, a, breadth of knowledge about you having created your own works um so i'd love to talk about the lovers first because that was at uh sydney opera house bell shakespeare production um again stunning cast amazing music where did the idea to turn the story of midsummer into a into a musical well it, it happened when i was doing midsummer night stream in high school when i was 15 um because I knew I wanted to perform. I loved it. Um, and the music, oh, sorry, the play that the drama teacher decided to do that year was Shakespeare. Oh, I was like, are what? you serious? <laughs> like of all the plays he chose, that guy? Oh. And I was not enthused. And I think because, because deep down inside, I felt like I wasn't, clever enough to ever understand it it felt like just like such high art yeah you know people that wear scarves and go "Mm," it felt like that was their their play um and i couldn't possibly ever understand what the frick was going on with his words um so i think because of that i was like "Mm -hmm." uh (laughs) and then in auditioning for the show and rehearsing for the show and with, you know, help of great uh, drama teachers, I began to realise this actually isn't as scary and it isn't as sort of inaccessible as I thought because it's just like humans and it's just stories. Yeah. And, in fact, the fun is in dissecting the text, which is what I used to do um, with texts of songs, with the lyrics. I would love to listen to you know a stevie wonder song or a Joni mitchell song fleetwood mac song whatever and 
in the days where you had the lyric booklet in the CD case, um, mm. look through the lyrics and like try to dissect the meaning and like interpret it in different ways and not hear the song for years and years and then hear it again and be like, oh, actually, no, now I think it actually means this. I wonder if that, you know, and the, the sort of detective uh, investigation of making meaning in the text and working it, working out what the actual sentence is saying. Yeah. I found so fun. And yeah. I thought this is, I cannot, I want other kids to be liberated like mm. this, to be like, actually, I'm not a huge dum-dum. Like yeah. I can yeah. work this out. I can understand humans and I can understand language and play with language and dissect language. Um, and so that's when I thought, it would be a, it would be great to make this a jukebox musical yes and use pop songs that are relatable that young people understand um, and use them to help tell the story and help sort of demystify this this story and Shakespeare in general um, and then uh, then I began the process of like picking Adele songs and Bruno Mars songs and and whatever Perfect. to put into this story but as jukebox musicals go you kind of have to sacrifice the story because you're trying to squeeze yeah. in a song or squeeze in lyrics that aren't completely consistent with what's going on and and I was like oh I think it's going to be compromised so um what will be heaps easier is if I write original music and lyrics and then 15 years later, I finally finished it. <laughs> or 10, 12 <laughs> years later, whatever it is, I finally finished it. Got there thing. in the end. <laughs> yeah. Boy, was I wrong in thinking it would be way easier to yeah, do an original score and yeah. original lyrics. But I think uh, that also gave me heaps of freedom to include my own voice and my own perspective maybe 400 years later, mm. um, which I perhaps couldn't have gotten if I was telling, trying to tell the story through Taylor Swift's voice and through Shakespeare's voice. Yeah. So instead it was sort of just me and Shakespeare. I sort of just having uh, a little buddy over session. from him and I hope he's not rolling. His <laughs> <laughs> I think that, that's my favorite thing about Shakespeare. I'm a big Shakespeare nut and I, and it, you're right. The big tackle that people have with Shakespeare is they look at the words and they go, I don't know what this says. Therefore I'm not going to care. Um, and it's the hardest Too thing to, yeah, exactly. And, and so, but you, when you get to the nitty gritty of the text and the characters, they are so relatable and just human in, you know, mm. every way 400 years later. And, um, with the jukebox, that's like, I have, I like jukebox musicals at times, but that is my issue I have is I go, this song doesn't make sense for what's going on right now. Like, yes, mm -hmm. we go, you watch Moulin Rouge and you go, I love this story, but why is she singing Firework right now? It doesn't make any sense. Um, and, yeah. and so the, the only one I've actually seen recently was, um, that worked was And Juliet. I thought they did, mm. they made that work very well um, into the jukebox elements. So I was very impressed with that. Yeah, um, I haven't seen it yet. And so, um, oh, yeah, I love it. see when I it comes to it. Sydney. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, it'll be here soon. And like Jersey Boys as well, I feel yeah. like it did really well. Like it, it it has to be like integral to the concept. Like it has mm. to just all be tied into if it's just we're fanging some songs in, it 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 just yeah, it does compromise the story. And I also worry that then the audience kind of isn't listening to the narrative as much because they're like, Oh, that song. Yeah. <laughs> Rather <laughs> being like the I, I've got to listen. They're they're what they're going to say is important to the story or important to their character development. Um, yeah. So it sort of keeps an audience listening. If, if everything is original and they don't know what is about to sort of come around the corner. Mm. Um, and yeah. I think what I particularly liked about the lovers is it, it did do that thing that you said at, at the very beginning of it. It, kind of addresses the fact that like Shakespeare, this guy, let's talk about him. But then also this is original baby. Um, and you, you made it very accessible. So like you could easily bring, you know, people who've never seen Shakespeare or approached it before to come in and, and you tackle that, um, that difficulty head on first. And then you just take it in this whole another direction, which I particularly loved. Yeah. And like, we have so many new Shakespeare fans that, that were either musical theatre fans or um, like people 
um, forced there because of school or whatever. But <laughs> um, <laughs> but so many uh, young people walked away with an appreciation of Shakespeare, which is exactly what I wanted. What I didn't anticipate was so many older people walked away with an appreciation for pop music. Amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, so we, which was, yeah, really cool. And like, and, and an appreciation of pop culture in general or an mm. understanding of, you know, what um, what some things are that like, you know, what what the insinuation with eggplant emoji means or <laughs> like that when we're like older people connected to, um, to youth and, and youth culture and sort of, um, yeah, kind of bridge those generational gaps, which was particularly gorgeous for me, particularly and, special. Um, and I don't know if, if you can tell us, but is is there a life beyond uh, Sydney Opera House for the lovers? Can we expect to see the lovers 2.0? Oh, I, de- I, there will, I will definitely be keeping the flame of, of the lovers alive. Yeah. Excellent. It's so very, very special to me. And so I'm sure when when the future life comes to light, I won't <laughs> shut up about it, I'm sure. <laughs> and then uh, the you'll dismissal. Yeah, you will hear about it for sure. Um, and the dismissal <laughs> is getting uh, rave reviews as well. You've you got people likening it to Australia's version of Hamilton. You know, you've got people, I saw one quote that was like, Crazy. this is the best show of the, of the net last 10 years. And I'm like, that is massive like how do you feel when you um hear people say things like that well it's very kind um extremely generous because i am like really um hard on myself or not hard on myself but like i have really high expectations for the the things that i'm a part of and so when i hear like a part of i a part of me when I hear lovely things, I'm like, yeah, but no, because what we should have done. And I, well, it's, I'm just like, it's never good enough. It is yeah. never good enough to me. Um, and so I hear, yeah, there's been the, the response to the dismissal has been gorgeous. Um, and I've had to learn to like, it was the same with the lovers. I've had to learn to not be like, yeah, but do, do you, think <laughs> that, you know, I just, yeah. just they enjoyed it. They had an experience. That's great. And, you know, I'm, I'm learning as well for me, if the production is fine, um, great. Like yeah. I'm, I'm learning to, to be like, that's, that's all you just need it to be open and it to be fine. And, and that's, that'll help that I can sleep at night with that. I don't yeah. kind of stress myself out about, being the Australia's answer to Hamilton. If I aimed for something like that, I would just never sleep at night. Yeah. And I would never finish it because um, I would just feel like it's never done and it's never perfect. And so yeah. try to keep yeah. stakes low for myself. But yeah, yeah he exactly. thinks like Australia's answer to Hamilton and then I'm like, the stakes are so high. Oh my God, Hamilton. <laughs> I know, yeah. What a responsibility. Oh, yeah. it's massive. It's just- it's just dress ups. It's okay. It's <laughs> when, dance, you were, fine. when you were when you were creating the dismissal, were you like, um, I I guess what came first, like chicken or the egg? Like, did you uh, research? Like, you knew you wanted to do a political um, musical, or did you, um, you know, focus on something in particular that it came from? Well, yeah, this one, um, the dismissal was Jay James Moody's idea. Jay. Um, is the co-writer of the book and directed the production and also um, is the artistic director founder of Squabble Logic, the, the theatre company that is um, putting the production on. Um, and so, yeah, it was, it was Jay's idea to turn these events into a musical, which I just thought is so ready for a musical. It's so theatrical as a story anyway with so many interesting characters and um so when he asked me to come on board, I dived into the research. I spent mm. a lot of time on Wikipedia and YouTube and reading our articles from the ABC. Um, <laughs> yeah, spent a lot of time doing doing the research. And once I knew enough 
which ha- which actually has to be quite a bit. Like there's so mm. much going on and a I have to really understand, yeah, what is the House of Representatives as yeah. opposed to the Senate and like really I still don't know. I've, I've even been to the Parliament House and they've said this is the difference and I still to this day be like, what? <laughs> Who's what now? What? I know. But like I just took, I just took as much information and then um, – and then I let it go. So I couldn't tell you. There was for a while there, I knew every, I knew the son's name of, you know, the deputy. Oh my like, but now I could not tell you a thing. Um, I, I don't even know Goff's middle name. And uh, yeah, but, but I just researched everything. I sort of drowned in it a little bit and then let it go and didn't think of it again. Just knew what I had to know, let it sort of marinate. And then um, then I just played. Then I just played and used what had sort of in- inspired me by, um, by what I'd read. But I felt like because Jay and Blake are incredibly smart, incredibly politically savvy, um, obsessed with politics, but, but this like event particularly, particularly um like you know uh when blake was really young he was a part of like some republican movement or something like oh wow (laughs) yeah they totally have their finger on the pulse and so i i I felt like it was going to be the music and and the lyrics particularly um it's going to be their job to um to help with anyone that doesn't with like people like me that really yeah, right. don't know what happened or is happening or the like minutia mm. of the politics um and yeah just sort of help with all that dense political content and make it understandable so i didn't mind that i was sort of giving the layman's interpretation of what an international trade emissary is because that's what Chirath kemlani was or you know i didn't mind that right. i you know, don't know what the, the, just that I don't know. I didn't mind that I didn't know yeah. <laughs> or that I, I knew enough to help it be palatable yeah, right. and help it be understood by everyone. Doesn't matter their age, doesn't matter if they mm. were just visiting Australia for the first time, does, you know, ev- that everyone could yeah. understand what was going on and, understand I guess that's the difficult thing when it comes to like politics itself is you, they, they can be confusing so you got to make it palatable as well totally um, and and, comedy and, is amazing for that music is amazing mm. for that and like a hooky lyric in the chorus is helpful for that but I think it's like really important I think we need to actually make politics not this like mysterious thing oh, we should all yes. actually understand what the heck's going on because that's yeah, where all definitely. these massive decisions are being made. So if anything, that's what I learnt through writing the dismissal and something that I was very much a part of my perspective um, in in my contributions to the dismissal was like, yeah, let's maintain our rage. Let's maintain our rage and enthusiasm, as Gough Whitlam said, and know what's going on, keep our finger on the pulse and um, and keep keep knowing what's happening so that we can hold them accountable and like ask questions and maintain, you know, the strength of our democratic voice. Mm, I love that. I think that's so important as well. I mean, um, particularly at this time in politics, everything going on, it's um, probably more prevalent than it's ever been in recent years, you know, which is totally. And like, I know that probably, in your early 20s in the 70s you'd read the paper every morning and you'd get a sense of what's happening. there'd be a little bit of celebrity got a little bit of sports but plenty of like the political you know whatever is the political happenings of the day and now we get on this thing mm. and we scroll and we see you know what our cousin's best friend's cat is doing yeah. and are sort of distracted by other things while the political machine keeps going, whether we know what's happening or not. You're very diluted, isn't it? Mm, yeah. Yeah. Well, look, uh, we'll take... You didn't want to talk about politics. You want to talk about theatre. <laughs> well, actually, I was going to say um, that one nugget of 
uh, if you want to take this for a future musical, one thing I'd love to see, and I heard he makes an appearance, is what happened to Harold Holt after he went into the ocean. So, oh, I'd love, yeah. I'd love to see that musical. That's what I'd love. That would be hilarious, and we'll we'll get Andrew Cutcliffe to come and play that role um, to reprise it because he's playing yeah. Harold Holt currently for for, yeah. for twenty two seconds in this production. <laughs> yeah, what what happened? Yeah, like yeah. a what like a um what do you call it? Like fan fiction where they yeah like fan come up fiction with their of own... it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you can take that one with you. That's for free. <laughs> Thank you. Ta- I've taken it. <laughs> Excellent. Well, um, I'll take a quick little ad break and then we'll uh, talk about Zombie the Musical. <laughs> 